Hello! Today we'll be doing a deep dive into the Radburn. I've seen a lot of people talk about how spongy enemies are, but I never experienced that on my own playthrough because I was using the Radburn. That's the pistol you get by doing the first Vanguard quest, as I covered in a previous video. Yes, you can get better random legendaries and mod weapons to be better, but as far as the default guaranteed weapons go, this is one of the best in the game. We'll start with the mods you get by default, what you can add, and then we'll cover what skills are best for the Radburn. The default mods are almost ideal already. This is why I hold it in such high regard. It fires as fast as a machine gun because of the binary and hair trigger mods, but it's technically a semi-auto pistol, so it gets the full benefits from the skills in the third and fourth tiers of the combat group. So that means you have a higher chance to do criticals than with full auto weapons. And on top of that, those criticals also do more damage than normal. The high fire rate means that you'll be spamming criticals too. It combines the best of both worlds, a high fire rate and superior damage per bullet. On top of that, the white hot mod and the radioactive legendary effect apply extra damage over time. It seems nice against humans, but not game breaking. But the effect scales with enemy health. So against very powerful monsters, you'll find the rad burn doing hundreds of damage per tick. In New Game Plus, I got over 500 damage per tick against a boss level enemy. This factor alone means that the weapon is relevant against all types of enemies, regardless of the level. You can further enhance the weapon with a silencer, reflex sights, and a laser pointer. If you invest several points in the weapon engineering skill, you can apply similarly good mods to most weapons. But as a default configuration, Radburn is one of the best around and easily viable even in the end game. But one tip is to always go for a semi-auto mod instead of full auto because of how skills work. To upgrade a skill, you need to meet certain requirements before you can spend the skill point to level it up. When it comes to the best combat skills, it usually involves doing criticals. The Radburn is great for that because it takes enough bullets to kill enemies that you'll get a steady number of criticals, but it still kills enemies fast enough that you can just play. So what are the best skills to get for the Radburn? I recommend skipping the weapon specific damage boosting skills. For the Radburn, there would be the Ballistics and Pistol skills. You can't get them, but you don't need them, at least in normal play. You'll naturally get better weapons as you rise in level, so it's better to invest those skills in the weapon and suit upgrading instead. The same goes for the Tier 3 and Tier 4 skills in the combat group. You don't need them to finish the game, but because they apply to most weapons, they're more worthwhile to get. Start with the Marksmanship skill. It straight up makes your guns get more criticals as long as they're not automatic. So it's worthless if you have a minigun, but for anything semi-auto, it's a must-have skill. The last level is pretty good for scoped weapons that you fire from the hip. The knockdown effect is very good for keeping melee enemies away from you and leaves all enemies vulnerable to follow-up shots. Then invest in sharp shooting. It makes criticals more damaging, so it combines perfectly with the extra chance to do criticals that you get from marksmanship. The last level makes criticals even more likely to happen. Armor Penetration is a great one to get too. It doesn't synergize with anything, but straight up reducing enemy armor is always good. Though the last level isn't as useful, it's nice against powerful enemies, but for most enemies, it won't really apply, so you might want to hold off on getting it early on. Crippling is nice too. Basically means that you can take enemies out of the fight without having to reduce their entire health bar. It's good against groups of enemies. Once you've got these, you can go back to the tier 3 skills to get some extra benefits like faster reloading or better accuracy when firing from the hip. These two skills are nice, but definitely optional. Aside from the major points we covered above, another nice benefit of going with the Radburn as your main weapon is that it uses 7.7k slash ammunition. That's the most abundant ammo in the game, and you should be coming out of battles with more ammo than you started with. But if you somehow find yourself short, that it's also one of the cheapest ammo to buy. This means that you can fire the pistol as much as you like. It also weighs practically nothing. By default, it only weighs 0.65, and even fully modded up, you're looking at around 1.5 encumbrance. This is actually the reason I tried the Radburn in the first place. I was carrying it as a spare weapon because it was so light. When I finally decided to try it out, I discovered how effective it is. The Radburn is not well suited to long-range combat because sustained fire makes you pretty inaccurate. 
it is accurate enough to take out small turrets at medium range, as long as you're on the ground and not moving. If you're running or flying, then that makes your shots pretty inaccurate. Aiming down sights does help, but it's not the most effective way to use the weapon. By far the most effective approach is to go gangster style. Basically run up on enemies, maybe pistol whip them too, and empty the clip into their faces. They step back a bit while you reload, and empty another clip into them. Only boss type enemies with multiple health bars can handle more than a couple of clips. At least several bullets will trigger radioactive explosions that will trash their health. Very fittingly, alcoholic drinks give you damage resistance. So like a true homie, you should chug back a beer before fighting groups of enemies. Maybe chase that with a coffee to get more oxygen regeneration. You can find beers everywhere, so you should never be lacking. And the reactive shield power is very helpful for this style too, but there's very little chance you'll die with even the most basic shield. The time slow power will be useful, but it's not necessary. If you're playing it right, you don't miss enough to benefit from this power. It's better to save your mana for the reactive shield instead. Don't underestimate this style, it's very effective. I finished both the Hunter and the Emissary in my first playthrough, and it was pretty straightforward. Considering that you can get this weapon very, very early in the game, that's pretty impressive. So if you look at the entirety of the Radburn, you can see why I said that it's one of the best guaranteed guns in the game. In practice, it's a machine gun that hits harder than actual machine guns. It has level damage over time for tougher enemies, and it's a good weapon for improving your skills. But the only negative is that it's got a tiny magazine. You could change it to a bigger one, but that would replace the White Hot Rounds mod, and that would significantly degrade the weapon, so I would not recommend that. That's the only blemish on this gun, and like I said at the beginning, it's one of the best weapons you can get in the game. If you haven't tried it yet, do yourself a favor and get it. You'll be surprised at how effective it is. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.